Spinal cord stimulation is a therapy for pain that has been around for some time, but over the last 10 or 20 years has seen a significant growth both in the technology, hardware, and software related to that therapy. And especially in the face of the recent opioid epidemic and development in that way, there's been a lot of focus paid towards developing this therapy to allow more patients to receive benefit from spinal cord stimulation. The way that spinal cord stimulation works is by placing two small wires, what we refer to as leads, in, in and around the spinal nerve structures in order to target energy, electrical energy, towards those structures to help decrease the signal of pain from the patient's area of pain to their brain, to help them have the sensation of pain relief by blocking those pain signals from reaching their brain. Those leads are then connected to a battery that are pl that's placed under the skin, similar to a pacemaker battery, except located usually in the patient's back. Spinal cord stimulation in general can target large areas of the body, whether it be your low back and both legs or your neck and arms. It can target these larger areas of the body and is particularly beneficial in patients who have had prior spine surgery and have persistent pain that's progressed following the spine surgery. A more targeted approach and type of spinal cord stimulation therapy known as dorsal ganglion stimulation has also developed over the last decade or so and has really advanced the field in terms of offering a more focused therapy to provide pain relief for patients. The dorsal ganglion stimulation is unique from typical traditional spinal cord stimulation therapy by targeting the nerves as they exit the spinal cord rather than the spinal cord in its entirety. And what that does is allow the therapy to target a particular area of the body where the patient's having their worst pain. This therapy is especially beneficial in patients who have complex regional pain syndrome or who have had pain that's developed following either some kind of traumatic injury or a prior surgery and patients have not had relief of their pain following, for example, a joint replacement or other types of surgery where for years after that surgery, the patients have had a, re a return of their pain. One of the unique advantages of spinal cord stimulation therapy and dorsal ganglion stimulation therapy is that both of those, the process begins with a trial phase. And so in the trial phase, is very similar to what a patient may undergo for an epidural injection, where a needle is placed into the epidural space and those wires or leads are placed into the appropriate space and then the needles are removed and the leads are connected to a battery that's taped to the patient's back. It's an external battery that's connected to the leads that are inside of the patient's uh, back close to the target of interest. And that trial period lasts for about a week during which the patient can assess what type of relief they get from that therapy. If the patients get great relief from that therapy, then those leads are removed after that week. Nothing has changed. And if the patients get relief, then we can proceed with a permanent implant of that therapy. And if the patients do not get relief from that therapy or the relief is not what they expected from that therapy, then we can remove the leads and there's no further consequence. So it really is a good trial of the therapy to see what kind of benefit they get in a minimally invasive, low risk uh, approach. And during the trial phase, if patients get good relief from the spinal cord stimulation therapy, then we can proceed to the permanent implant, which would involve a minor surgery. There's one incision that's about three centimeters long to allow the battery to be placed just under the skin. That battery is then connected to the wires that are placed in and around the spinal cord nerve structures, also through a very small incision and that allows the entire device to be hidden under the patient's skin so that it, do, it doesn't intrude into the patient's life. Spinal cord stimulation has come a long way. There's been great advances in terms of MRI compatibility, as well as minimal invasiveness into the patient's life. There are certain battery models that are rechargeable, and so then the patient can recharge those batteries just as they would their cell phone or nowadays even their watches, and those batteries can last anywhere between seven and 10 years and they have control over the amount of energy that they're using through the therapy, often through a small device such as a cell phone. There are also non-rechargeable batteries that can be utilized, and in those instances, the patients don't have to worry about charging, and those batteries can often also last anywhere between five and seven years um, in, in duration. And so then that can be also a very hassle-free form of utilizing that therapy. Outcomes 
are very good. Patients who undergo this therapy, they have significant pain relief, often a level of pain relief that they are unable to achieve from other treatment that they've experienced in the past. Another benefit of spinal cord stimulation therapy is that there's very low side effects, uh, such as you may see from other types of therapy, including medications. Usually spinal cord stimulation allows patients to be very active and functional without any sedation, drowsiness, and uh, related side effects. Effects. In particular, especially the newer technologies related to spinal cord stimulation have shown very good outcomes and durable outcomes, meaning that patients continue to do very well when followed even several years after implantation of the spinal cord stimulation device.